Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and show you guys this pretty cool game that just launched on Steam, I think yesterday, called Legend of Keepers. Uh, now the reason why I wanted to show you guys this is it's got an interesting take on the way the game is played compared to most, whereas in most games you are the hero trying to slay the villains, or yeah, villains and pillage their dungeons and etc. This one is kind of the opposite. You're playing as the enemy trying to defend your uh, your dungeon from the heroes. There was another game that came out similar to this called, I think, Iratus, which is based off Darkest Dungeon. I don't remember. I never actually ended up playing it. Um, so I've played for about four hours, so I just want to give you guys the rundown of how this game works. So uh, you've got three save files. You've got three heroes you can pick from, although as of right now, you can only play between these two. So I'm going to be playing as this main guy right here. So let me just see if I can... So let me load it. There we go. Load so upon uh, creation of your uh, your file, or basically whenever you wipe, because this is a roguelike, so whenever your slaveholder dies, um, it'll go back and then you can load that file again and you can actually allocate a few talent points that you get. Um, so if you look at the slaveholder level 10 here, uh, I've got talent points invested into him. I'm not sure if I can show you exactly where they are, uh, but let's go ahead and explain the next part. So. Uh, when you first click OK, you have an employee list and you have basically this right here. So, so to explain what happens here is um, the default is you're going to have two rooms for your dungeon. So you want to think of a team. So let's just go in randomly and assume we don't really know because it's our first time playing. Um, and if you've noticed, if you are a Twitch streamer and you have Twitch integration, you can actually, um, it, it pulls subscribers and followers from your channel and then they can also vote to make it more difficult for you or vote to make it more easy for you. So let me go ahead and just click start. So after you clear this, then week two and week three and week four opens up until the next adventure slot. So I'm just gonna click start. So this is the preparation phase, which is the majority of the game. Don't mind the webcam, it's very dark right now. Okay, so um, as you can see right here, this no, nobody's really gonna vote because I'm not actually streaming right now, but these are the people who are going to invade my base. So the important thing to note is you wanna look at their resistance types, you wanna look at their attack positioning, where they're attacking to, uh, and you wanna look at their passives. So. For example, uh, replaces one of her penalties with a bonus at the start of her turn, so I believe this person does not want to be debuffed. Um, this guy applies in rage. You can see this guy is front physical, which means you want someone in the front who can deal with physical. This is frontal air damage, so if my front line wants to be able to soak up air and physical. And this is front fire, which basically means my first person is going to get completely fucked. Um, so let's take a look. This guy is not good against fire, but can do, that just doesn't work. This guy is not really good. So unfortunately in this composition, there's not really much I can do. I think no matter what's going to happen, my frontline guy is going to die. So I'll just put, let's see, speed check. This guy's going to hit first. He's 85 speed. So if I put someone who can survive the fire and then, so like, let's try this. So I put the archer here first because this guy has 85 speed. You can see at the bottom. So he's going to hit him first but then he's gonna shoot after. So all he has to do is survive the front hit, which based off his resistance, he should. Um, so then I'm gonna go ahead and use the, let's do Skeleton Dog. Um, let's see, Skeleton Dog is not good against air, but can tank physical damage. And then let me try Vampire, since this is kind of new for me, and he synergizes with the Skeletal Dog. All right, so that's the first room. Uh, second room uh, is a trap room. You can see the trap here indicated and you can get new traps. You can modify your trap. Well, you can level your traps up. Uh, traps synergize with other character skills because of the like ailments that they apply on them. So front is uh, not good against nature. He's minus five. So I'm just going to use the poison dart, which hits the frontal target. Uh, next room is spell. So spell is either, I think spell is your hero spell. Yeah. So I get to use one of three hero spells when they uh, end up walking through the middle. Sometimes you'll have another slot in here, like another room, and that room will be um, a trap that's inherent to the dungeon type. So this is an ice dungeon, so it'd be like an ice trap. Uh, let's see. Here I'm gonna do Enrage, because Enrage is gonna buff the next units, which are right here. So assuming that everyone lives, let's see, or does, does not live, Quelthalos is not good because he's fire. He's 60% fire and he's 45%. Only this guy is minus 15. Um, this is backline air damage. Rick's not bad. Backline air, 15%. Yeah, that's not too bad. Um, let's see. I'll put Akon in the front because he has a passive that reduces damage to all units behind him. 
And then in more 10 is frontal air and AoE air. Uh, well, unfortunately, this uh, this is like not exactly very good. Um, hmm. Well, let's just try it. Here we go. Confirm, and then this is the Dungeon Keeper. If this guy dies, then the playthrough starts over. You keep your hero level, but the playthrough starts over. So, here's the speed check. She hits me in the face. Oh, she had two skills. I didn't realize that. What was her passive? Ah, see, this is where I fucked up. She had a passive that says deals 12 ice damage to the monster with the lowest ice resist. Which means this guy actually had the lowest ice resist. So you can see there how important it is to pay attention to things. 72 air damage. Uh, damage dealt increased by 10% per stack of bleeding applied to target. Unfortunately, none of these are really going to work out very well. Um, I'll just bloodbath him. I am playing on a harder difficulty, so you will notice that the mobs do quite a bit of damage. This guy's going to die here because he's going to get hit by all three. Okay, then we go to the trap room, which will shoot a trap over here. Good. And then we make it to the spell room, which I will whip this guy in the face. Unfortunately, he's got really good fire res, but at least it will ignite him. Now, there's two ways to kill heroes. You can empty their HP bar, like normal. Or, you can think of Darkest Dungeon. You can lower their morale, like the stress meter, which is this. If that hits zero, then they also die. If you kill them, they draw blood. If you, like, scare them to death, then instead of blood, they give you tears, which are both resources you can use at the end. This guy's gonna have to hit back because I can't hit the front. At least that's decent damage to the back line. He's gonna hit. I think he's not good against that. Oh, he lived! Nice. Aw. He has a bleed, though. So the, okay, good. The bleed and toxin killed him. So let us focus... You know, honestly... I should have positioned this person behind here because Gust would have given uh, this guy haste, if you look. I'm oh my god, that damage. Now this guy is going to look really overpowered, but that's because this is like, this is basically like the first fight, so it's not going to be very difficult. This should whip apply bleed. I think the bleed kills her. Okay, good. She cleansed. That's quite a bit. 65. This guy does not heal the full after a fight. Um, he heals based off of the weeks. So, you'll see here about, like, basically what's going to happen. So... Essentially, based off of how strong the monsters were that you fought, you'll have different rewards. So we fought adventurers. There's adventurers, veterans, and I think champions. Champions can be very mad. Um, so here I've got a choice at what I want to pick. Since since we have a lot of wind damage on our team, I'm going to take Cumulus, who is a wind elemental. And you see there at the bottom, he has minus air res and damage taken increase. So he looks like a really good support. Okay, um, so motivation, if your enemy hero dies, or your monster dies in combat, they lose two motivation. To gain that motivation back, you need to put them in the garrison, um, although you could keep them, but if they completely run out of motivation, I think they go on, like, they leave for like 10 weeks, which is, I think, like one and a half, like, combat cycles, I'll show you in a second here. So for the sake of this, I'm just going to leave everything alone right now. So now we get to kind of mess around a little bit. So you can pick one of three here. So merchant is buy a monster or a trap, which wouldn't be too bad, but I'm going to skip it right now. Uh, I don't really like engineer at the moment because I don't like upgrading traps until I have a theme to kind of build around. So I'm going to take the event, which is just really random as to what it can give. Um, the workers union has made... Uh, Okay, so this will give plus one motivation to all my available monsters for 150 gold. So that means every single guy here that died will get one back, which is honestly really strong right now. Um, it's just I don't know the so I'm gonna I'm gonna refuse this, and the only reason why I'm refusing it is because I don't know what my core composition is gonna be yet. So I don't really want to do that. So plunder is you can send it picks three volunteers. And you can go send them to do one of three various things. Each one grants something. So let's see. 30% chance to find an artifact. Vulnerability 2 for all monsters, 75% chance. 
uh, upgraded trap. So I'm going to take this one and hope that they don't get completely fucked on the Vuln. Apply to all monsters. Oh, all monsters for the next dungeon. Yee, that doesn't seem very good at all. And I didn't get an artifact, so that's like super bad. Um, so normally there would be a trainer. I think it's random. Maybe it just doesn't give it on the first one. Um, so a trainer is used to evolve your guys, and you can get them up to uh, level 5. Maybe not evolve, but just level up. And they get really cool synergy when kind of mixed between each other. So for here, I'm going to go... I'm going to take the merchant and see if we can get a lucky guy. So... See, the problem is I don't know what I want yet. These, this is like a fire guy. This is a catapult. I'm going to renew one time just to see what drafts. Um, I do like the Yeti, but again, we don't really have much synergy right now. But he's really strong. So I'm actually going to buy this Yeti. Good. And then leave. And then now it would be time for the next adventure fight. And then later on, you can see there's like slots for extra. Like I said, you can have like uh, a veteran or a champion and a bunch of other stuff that kind of... Well, not a bunch of other stuff, but that's pretty much about it. Um... And then there are a lot more random events that occur, and there's a lot more um, randomness that can occur from events, and then there's like temporary buffs you can do, and positive buffs, and so far it's pretty fun. Um, I thought maybe there wasn't going to be too much content, but so far I've really been enjoying myself, and that's only with this class. Oh, here we go. Here I can actually show you the skill tree. Um, so you can respect this, I believe, for free at the end of your run. So at the moment I went with... When a hero is killed uh, by a monster, it grants a 20% chance that the group of monsters enrages. For each stack of enrage, you deal 30% more damage. Um, grants each monster in the garrison a 30% chance to get one additional motivation back after a dungeon. So that would be the healing area I was telling you guys about. Uh, training price of monsters reduced by 20%. Adds a skeleton dog to the starting monsters and replaces the goblin with a vampire, which is basically what I've been using in my team. You guys saw I had the vampire and the skeleton dog. Uh, and then I can't show you the other class, but uh, I'm pretty keen to see what it does. Anyway, that's about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox, except for Saturdays. Have a wonderful time, everybody.